Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials and in this video we're going to continue on the social media app series where we're building our own social media just like Instagram, Facebook, or the many other social apps that are out there right now. In this video I'm going to be doing some simple UI improvements from the last video and then I'm also going to be adding in the reactions feature so that you can react to other people's posts and then see what people are thinking about the posts in the community. Let's get right into it. So there's a few things that I wanted to change that I can already think of. Like, first of all, the first big thing that I'm thinking is the email. Uh, instead of that, I want to have a username for each account, kind of like how Instagram uses a username, X uses a username, Facebook, I think they probably use a username, but it's more like just the regular name. I think it would be a good idea to add usernames to this social media app. So that's what I'll probably do first. Just set up a simple, uh, set up the usernames for the user model. So to do that, we're gonna have to add a new field to our user model. I'm gonna stop the server real quick. Let's go into the terminal. I'll run a Rails G migration command. This is going to add the username to the users. And then we'll do a space username, which will add it as a type string. You can press enter. This is going to create the migration, which will add that new field. As you can see, it created this file. If you want to check the content, you just simply do a cat of the file. And this is the content. So it's adding a column to the users table, which is called username and it's type string. So that looks good. Now I'll just, or actually, we might want to make that unique. Depending on what database you're using, you might have a unique field. Uh, so wait, let me go back. Let me do a Rails D migration, which means remove the migration. And then we'll do it again. Instead of doing just string, which is like blank, we can do colon unique. And now it'll enforce that the username has to be unique in the database, which might be helpful. So now let's cat that file, see what it added. So you can see it still actually adds a username type string, but the difference is it adds an index which enforces that the username has to be unique. So that's cool. And then let's do a Rails DB migrate. And boom, we now have usernames on the user model. So to add our username, right now I am signed in as a user. So if I wanted to, let's say, edit my profile, you can go to slash users slash edit. Right now we don't have a link, but this is how you can edit your profile. So this is what I have right now. I have the email, password, password confirmation. So this is using the built-in uh, edit functionality from Devise. And the thing, one thing about this is that it does require the current password to update your changes, which might be a good thing, but you might also not like that, that flow just for doing something simple. But I think for changing email or username, it's probably a good idea to check for the password. But also, of course, this is kind of an ugly UI. It would be hard for a user to figure out what's going on because there's like so many different fields and then you have to remember to put your password here. So this isn't really a great flow. It's just a minimal one that does technically work. So real quickly, I'm going to go to the edit page and add some padding because <laughs> that padding is kind of uh, making me annoyed. So let's go to app, views, device, registrations, edit. And I'm just going to add that same padding top to here. Reload. Cool, so now there's a little bit of padding on the edit page. What we need to do is add our new field to this form. So let me go back in the code. And what I'll do is I'll just come up here to the registrations. And I'm just going to copy this because I'm kind of lazy. So let's copy it, paste it, and then I have to just fix a few things. So let's change it to a text field. Change this to username. Autocomplete username. Although, actually, probably not autocomplete username because that... Autocomplete comes from the browser. So let's not even do autocomplete. Let's also turn off autofocus. We'll leave that for the email. And reload. And boom, we now have a username field on the form. So that is amazing. But we still have to do a change in device to allow that field in our form. Because right now, with the built in device setup, it only permits the email and the password. So we need to permit a new attribute called username. And I'm just going to quickly <laughs> think right here. This is probably the Stack Overflow I usually go to. 
So this is the answer. You added before action on the application controller, and then we permit our additional keys. So I'll go to controllers, application controller. I'll drop this code in. So what we're doing is we're doing a before action. If it's the device controller, and if it's the device controller, we're permitting the sign up keys. All right, let's try this account update one and see if it works. So I'm gonna to try to set my username to indigo tech. Press update and we got an error. Oh, right, the current password can't be blank. So I need to put my password in and update. It says it was updated, uh, but I don't think it actually was. I'm gonna go into the Rails console real quick. Oh, of course you have to be in the right directory. Social media. I'm gonna go Rails C. And then I'll just check on that last user by doing user.last. I wanna see what attributes it has. And of course, oh, it has a username. No way, Indigo Tech. So it did work. Uh, it's actually working perfectly. So one good thing that might be or like one huge thing that we probably want to add is just a simple nav bar at the top. And then we could display the username, you know, for the user. We could also give them a link to sign out. So let's add the, the nav bar right now. So to add our nav bar, I'm going to go back into the code. Then I'll go over to the app views layouts application. So this is where we're going to render our nav bar uh, similar to the layouts, how we are similar to the alerts, how we just rendered a partial. We're going to render another partial and I'll put it on top of the alerts. I'll render layout slash navbar. Now what we can do is create that new partial in the layouts folder. We do that by creating a new file, call it underscore navbar.html.erb. So now we have this new file for the navbar. And I'm just going to do some basic styling to try to get this set up. So I'm going to do sticky top zero. It's going to make it stick to the top. And I'm going to start it off with a simple link. Link to home. I'm just going to go to slash route. And let's see what this looks like. Let's reload. And there you go. It's a simple nav bar. So what sticky means is that it'll stay at the top initially. It won't affect the styling. But then when you scroll down, it'll actually stick. And it'll go with you. This is pretty good. Uh, the only thing is I kind of want to add some padding here on the nav bar. So I'll probably put an inner div. And then I could add like a max width. And we could add some flex on this. Let's do height full. Flex item center justified between. It's usually the styling I do for my nav bars. So now we have the home right here. And on the other side, we could have the username. So what I'll do is I'll say if current user, then I'll just display the username. I'll put that in a P for now. We'll see what that looks like. Cool. So we have home link and we also have our username, which shows us that we're signed in. This is looking pretty good already. All right, now we can test if creating a new account with the username will work correctly. Uh, so right now when I go to create account, we actually don't have the username field and that's expected because those forms are hard coded for registrations and new. So what we have to do is let's go to the edit. Let's take that username field and then go over to the new and drop it in right underneath the email so that we have a similar flow right here. So you set the email username. Cool. Now, another thing that might be nice to have is to validate the presence of the username because right now you would be able to sign up without setting your username there wouldn't be an error or anything so we should actually say that the the username has to be present and it also has to be unique so to set up those validations we can quickly go into the code head over to the models and the user.rb so inside this user class i'm going to add validate well, actually, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do a method like this, or we can just say validates and then put the name of the field, so username. And then we can say, do a comma, and we're gonna check for presence true and uniqueness true. 
but as long as I spelt those right. Should work. So I'm going to create my new new user. Hello world user. Big password. Cool. Just like that, we were able to sign in with the user account. Now we could go ahead and switch these emails over to using the the username. So we're not leaking all of our users emails on their posts so let's go over to the feed underscore post partial and i'll switch this from email to username and let's go back in here reload and one thing you'll notice is that all these previous posts the user because we signed up without the username we don't have a username on them but what i'll do is i'll go and fix that in the console i'll set their username so let's go into the terminal real quick I'm going to open up a Rails C shell. And I'm going to do a query. So this is how you do queries in Rails. We can do off the user model, do a dot where. And I want to check wherever the username is nil. And then check dot count to show how many. So there's five. Now what I want to do is update all with a new username. So I'll just call it like user and then I can put a secure random dot hex to be like a random bunch of characters. So they just like this is the username user whatever. Huh, I didn't like that. It says unique constraint failed. Oh, record not unique. Oh, cuz look. <laughs> Wait, no, that's confused user where username nil update all oh I see what's happening you know it's funny I, I was expecting that setting it like this would loop through for some reason this would try to update all of them simultaneously it's kind of silly so we actually need to loop it ourselves to so do like an each and then we can do brackets to go inside the block or like each user and then inside of here we should do the update you can say like user and pass in that secure random. So now each one would generate a new ID, just like that. There we go, much better. Uh, that's complete. So now I'm just going to exit out, go back in the app, reload, and boom, we got our users. Although obviously it's just a random X, <laughs> but it is unique. So cool. And I have my user account. This is already a nice improvement. We have usernames instead of emails, and we have a nav bar. This is perfect. So the next thing that I might do is I could quickly add in a drop down. So when you click on your username, we could drop down a little div, and then we could have a few helpful links like edit account and sign out too. That's a very easy thing to build. Just a little bit of front end work. So let's go over to the nav bar partial, and what I'll do is inside of this if current user check. I'm going to add a new div, which will wrap this username. And then for class, I'm going to do relative. And then we're going to add a data controller, which will connect to our JavaScript. So I'm going to be using the built in JavaScript library, stimulus JS. And this is how you can hook it up. We give it a data controller drop down. This is going to initialize the, the JavaScript controller. And then we can have an action. Whenever you click on this username element, we could have a data action. Click. And this is going to go to drop down toggle function. That's kind of how you can hook in the events. You have to do the arrow. It's kind of a silly syntax, but I'm pretty familiar with that at this point. Now what you do is we're going to add a div, which will actually be the menu. So this is going to be absolute. And then we're going to need to like position it below the text. So we might do like top 16. Let's give it a fixed width and height. And BG degree 200 should be good. <clears throat> and then finally we can add, uh, we can set this as a target so we can access it in the JavaScript. So we can say data drop down dash target and then give this a name. I'm going to call it the menu. Now let's reload, see what we got. Okay, so this is the box. 
it's a little bit too far down. And also, uh, the width is kind of weird, so maybe I'll increase this to like 56. And then top 14. Still a little bit too much, so maybe top to, uh, top 10, maybe. And then we could also do a rounded large. See, it's all square, but doing rounded might look, help it look a little bit better. Okay, I think that actually looks pretty good. And then inside of it, of course, we would have our links. But we can handle the toggle. So right now, this is always showing. But the way that we can handle toggling it is, first of all, we'll hide it. And then when we click, we're already setting it to that toggle action. So what we'll do is we'll toggle that hidden class on and off of the element. So it's very simple. That's how you can do like very simple UI changes in JavaScript. Uh, so we need that stimulus controller. We don't have one yet. So I'm going to go into the terminal and run this command rails g stimulus. Put the name of the controller. It's going to be drop down. And that's how you can quickly generate a stimulus controller. So now I'm going to go back, go to the JavaScript controllers, drop down controller. And inside of here, we just have an empty stimulus controller with a connect function. So I'm going to start adding in the few things that we need. So first of all, we need to define targets. Uh, static targets equals this. It's going to be menu. Oh, wow. I don't think I've coded stimulus in so long. This is kind of like looking at the syntax is making me feel weird. That's funny. I mean, I think this is how you do it. I don't even remember now. All right, so then this action is going to be toggle. We're going to grab that event. And then actually, oh yeah, we do want the event just in case we want to prevent default. So it doesn't do any, like if it was a link, we wouldn't want it to follow through the link if it's just trying to toggle. What we'll say is this dot menu target dot class list dot toggle hidden. So that should actually work when you click here. Boom, it does toggle the drop down. Cool. Drop down open. And then if you wanted, when you click outside of the drop down for that to close, we can add in another event listener. Let's just go back to drop down. I'll do the action right next to the data controller. Although it really doesn't matter. And we're gonna check for the click at the window. So instead of the click on the element, it's like the global click. And then we'll send that to drop down, close unless drop down. I usually just call it something like this. Well, that's a little bit confusing. And then what we do is we check if the event target is inside of the element. So this dot element dot contains. And actually we would check if not then we are going to menu target i really just want to i want to add the hidden class so i want to hide it but just in case uh you never want to add like more than one hidden class because then when you try to toggle it off it won't work because it'll only get one of them so that's kind of the trick so what we have to do is we have to check if not this dot menu target dot classes dot contains hidden you check that first before you set the hidden class that's only really important when you're adding when you're removing it really doesn't matter it looks like the syntax is wrong on this for some reason oh wait if it's because i forgot the the bracket see i haven't so i haven't read javascript in a while all right let's reload Click, it toggles, and then click outside, it closes. Perfect. So now quickly, I can add in those links, and then we'll be done with this part. It's just a very simple part of the UI that I usually like to add. So inside of this menu section, well, let's actually do... I kind of want to style it a little bit. I think I can add, like, some padding on here. P2, flex, flex call. And now let's add a link to edit account. This is going to go to the edit user registration path. And I'll just give this like a little bit of styling. 
reload. Perfect. Edit account. You click that, it actually brings you to the edit page. This is already pretty good experience. And then I can finally add in like a sign out link. Usually I put that towards the bottom. Let's do a link to sign out. This is going to go to the destroy user session path. Make sure you don't set it to registration or else that'll delete the user account. We're going to go here and we have to use data turbo method delete to make this link fire a delete request, which will actually sign out the user. And then we can style it with class. I'm just going to try empty auto to push it down. That did work. I could also push it with ML auto. Then we can add some padding, rounded large, BG gray, 500, text red, 200. Let's see what this looks like. It's a little ominous sign out button. It's a little bit too ominous. We don't need to be spooky with the red. There we go. So quick little sign out. You click it, boom, it actually signs you out. That's cool. And yeah, here we are back on the app. Uh, you can probably choose if you guys want to have your nav bar displayed for users that aren't signed out. Or wait, users that aren't signed in. I, I was thinking I only want to show the nav bar for users that are signed in. So I'll probably go back to the application or wait, layout application. And I'll just add this quick check if current user. So that if there isn't a current user, they will not show the nav bar. Just like this. So it's just a regular uh, splash page. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new account again. I'm going to call this coffee drinking drinker. Coffee, coffee, coffee. And let's sign up. We just signed up for social media, guys. This is amazing. Now I'm going to create my first post. Hello, everybody. I am a coffee drinking coder who loves to learn. Have some fun. Let's grab an image. Probably have a couple images. All right. Create post. Go back to the home and boom, check it out. This is my latest post. Coffee drinking coder who loves to learn. Obviously, there's still a lot that we could do for refactoring, but I'm pretty happy with this at the same time, just to get to this point already. I guess, although it's been kind of a long series, but I've had fun. All right, so we really haven't even hit the next two things on my list, which are add reactions, add comments, but we have added username and navbar, which was pretty important for my list, because now we have a more usable app. The next feature that I'm going to be building is the reactions feature, which is going to allow users to react to other users posts. Uh, so it's going to be really cool to see how it implements. If you've already used other social platforms, you know how big of a feature this is, and it really helps you connect with your friends and everybody by reacting to posts. And then, of course, the thing that we'll do next is add comments. So hopefully we can get both of those features done in this one video. So I'm going to quickly create a new account because I don't remember my login information. And do a new account. Fill out my information real quick, sign up, and boom, this is what it looks like inside of the social platform. This is cool, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new post. Hey everybody, excited to join this community. And then, yeah, really like this doesn't matter too much say like hello something and then get ourselves I'm actually gonna upload a few images because I want to see how what happens if you have more than one image let me create post looks like it's taking a second to upload the files but now that that's done we have our images here if we go back to the home page it actually pulls out the first image so that's interesting I wonder what it would look like if we had a post without an image we might want to figure out that possibility Great. Post from Indigo. And then for the body, I don't even want to. There's no sense in typing, so let's just go and look up Alorum Ipsum 
you guys are familiar with that, it just gives you some random text that doesn't really say anything readable. I think to generate, you just click generate and yeah, this is your lorem ipsum. So I can grab that. It kind of looks like it's formatted for a blog article. So this is nice. And I'm not going to do any images. Let's create post. Go back to home. All right, this is what it looks like when you don't have an image, which is interesting. You know what I think we could do is we could probably fill more of the space with the article if there's no image. I'm going to quickly do that change. That's just a little UI tweak. These are things that you'd want to do eventually, like whenever you need them, really. So this is our setup right now. Uh, it's very, very simple. There's nothing complex going on. And I probably should refactor this because it's a little bit wasteful of space since everything just stacks on top of each other. Like the caption, that's good. But then this part, it kind of like it does the dots, even though it didn't extend that much. But what I'm going to do is so right here, this is the code, the plain text. So what we want to do is maybe move. I guess we just need to change the limit, right? The first limit. So we could do some code in here. <laughs> this is gonna look. This is not gonna look very professional. Uh, oh, or you know what's another idea? We could actually turn this into a method. Let's go over to the post.rb model, and we're gonna define a method inside of here for that feed body which is the method name that we called it. And then inside of it, we can do our code right here, which will grab the body to plain text and it's gonna grab the first amount of characters. So then we could just say, uh, we could have a variable char limit and then we can increase this to, let's say 250, if not images.any. So that's one way you could do it. And if we reload, actually says no location provided can't build URI. oh whoops it, i guess i accidentally cut the condition from here so i need to add that back if post.images.any now that'll fix that all right this is what it looked like actually it's weird the limit's not working i think i forgot to pass it in whoops <laughs> i define it but i never pass it into the dot first so now we'll be returning the first amount of characters which would be either 50 if there is images or 250 if there's not. We could actually break this out so it's a little bit easier to understand. So if image is any, 50, else 250. You do something like that with a ternary operator. Uh, and then I'll reload. All right, this is a lot better. So now we get this extended preview if there isn't an image and then we get the regular preview here. And what we could also do is we could only show these three dots uh, for a certain condition. So see the three dots, we could say if post.feedbody, we really have to check the, because the feed body is the, the limited body for the po for the card. We can check the regular body, so if post.body.body to plain text dot See, this is like, I might even do another method here. Because I just don't want to write all this stuff in this partial. So see how we have this nice me nice method for feed body? We can do another nice method for post dot. We'd want to say like chars. Or like feed body truncated i don't really know if this is a good setup but we could do a method like this feed body truncated and then we could put another method here it's actually not terrible so then what we do is uh, forget about the three dots for now we'll check if this so this is actually the plain text i'll we'll call dot chars dot count I'm trying to make it not break just in case. So like original text is going to be this. Or zero. 
this body count, no, body chars. And then feed body chars is just gonna be, well, we don't even have to do that. So we can just check if body chars, or wait, yeah, body chars greater than feed body dot chars dot count. Something like this. And we kind of also want the or zero. Cool. This or zero. So we have those fallbacks. And the only reason is just in case someone did a post with no content, I want to make sure this doesn't fail. Since we're going to be running this on like, you know, every time that we do this. So now we have this if statement. What we could do is just return those three dots if the feed body truncated. So we did all that work and hopefully it paid off. So I think it did actually. Yeah, look, Halo World doesn't have the three dots, but the one that does uh, has it. And of course, see, there's like a little bit more space, so maybe we didn't even have to truncate it there. So we could change the count up in this method. So we can increase this to maybe 100. And then for the one without an image, we could increase that to like 400. Reload. Cool. So that's funny. Put the image URL or like the file image name right here. Cool. So this actually looks pretty good right here. I'm happy with this. We did that slight improvement to the truncation UI. It's not really a big deal, but it's cool to get that out of the way. Now let's jump right into building the reactions feature. All right. So to build this feature into our app, what we're going to need is a model for reactions and then user would be able to click a little menu would pop up with the options of different reactions and then when they click on one it would just send that reaction put it right here and then we probably also want to send a notification over to the user so we add something in for that as well all right so let's get right into this i'm going to go over to the terminal and let's generate our new model do rails g model reaction and then the reaction would have a reaction name. I guess we could put it, we could put name. Uh, this is the way that we're going to distinguish the reactions. And then we can map those out to emojis in our app or even icons, SVGs, anything we want to. And we could of course switch those later down. So I feel like this is a good way of doing it. And then what we're gonna have is a user belongs to. So this would be the user that is reacting to a post and then we'll also have a post belongs to just like this and i think that's the only really fields that we're going to need for this feature it's very simple it's going to belong to a user belongs to a post and then this will connect those two together and we use the name to choose which type of reaction it is so now I'll press enter generate the model and then i'll do rails db migrate to migrate the database and we can clear that out and just restart the server. And let's go back to our app. So nothing has changed whatsoever, except for we have that new reaction model. So now we'll start getting into the code. So I think what I'm gonna do for the state for like adding a reaction, I think I would start it off with like just one of those. I've seen an icon before for this. Let me go over to hero icons. I think this might be where I saw it. See, so they have a face. There should be a face with, I thought there was a face that was kind of like, oh, maybe that was on font icon, because I or font awesome. I did this a while ago, and I used the same icon. I don't think they have it anymore. Anyways, we could actually just put something like this, the face smile, as the default. And then when they click on it, they could choose, like that. that's when the pop-up would pop up with all the options. So, all right, so to add that, let's go over to the feed underscore post partial where we have all of our other content, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a class relative on this card because I'm going to position uh, this link at the bottom right corner using absolute positioning. So what I'm gonna do is just add a div class absolute bottom zero, right zero. And let's close it out and inside we'll put this icon. 
And now we can actually check that out and see what it did. Cool, so we have this little emoji face at the bottom right corner. <laughs> That's already kind of fun. So what I'll do is make it a little bit bigger and add some padding. So to add padding, I'm just gonna change this bottom zero to bottom four. There's like a little bit of padding from the bottom. And then I'll go on the SVG, I'll change the class to like width 12, reload. I mean, yeah, that's actually pretty good already. So that's the reaction right there. Oh, one thing I just noticed is when you scroll, the post goes over the nav bar. That's not good. Uh, so that's because of how the CSS is set up. We can easily fix that by going to layouts nav bar. Uh, in this partial, and this is the code for the nav bar, we have to set a Z index. So I'm just going to do a Z and I'm going to pass in this custom value, which is just like 999. So it should be the highest Z index on the page. Reload. All right, this is already a lot better. So the UI is fixed because that was kind of weirding me out. So now for this link to add a reaction, uh, what it really will be is a link. So let me go back to the post partial and let me wrap it in a link to, and I'm gonna use a pound sign just to have a blank link for now as a placeholder. And then once I define this route, I will add it in. Uh, so that's actually, if we reload, we should see the style is the same, except for when you hover, uh, it adds like that click state. And we could even add styling to this SVG. You get out of hover styling and do scale 105. So it's gonna slightly get bigger, but it'll look like it's kind of like, see it's moving a little bit. So it gives you some feedback to the user. And that's always good for your apps, like to have that little bit of feedback. It feels good. All right, so then what I do is when you click it on it, it would open up a drop down of all of the different reaction options. And good thing we already have that stimulus controller for drop downs, remember up here. So this already works really well. We can have the same sort of setup for this reaction icon, which right now it just does this thing on the page. So actually what I'll do is I'll add that stimulus controller right now. Let's add data controller, set that to drop down. And then on the link to, I'm gonna set a data action, which will go to the drop down and the toggle function. And the other thing that we need is the menu, of course. So we actually need another relative class since I'm going to position it. Or actually, no, we could position it off the top. Let's just have a div. Or wait, can we? I think we can. Because if I do an absolute and an absolute, what would that do? It needs to be absolute and then let's give it the width, fixed width and height, a background color, and then I just want to see what the styling came out to. I don't see anything, so let me try to put some text inside of it. Hello. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. So when, I, when you go absolute inside of an absolute element, it doesn't really work correctly. So actually, let's bring the data controller drop down up to the higher level, and then we'll just take our menu and we'll put it outside of this absolute link that's probably a better way of doing it so now when we reload this is where our element ended up being positioned because we didn't add any top so we'll do uh, actually i kind of since i want to have it pop up above this emoji we could think about or actually another idea is to when you click this icon you could also just like show the emojis in the line I think having the pop-up would be a fine UI. That kind of reminds me of like Facebook or LinkedIn. So let's see if I can position this div over there. So let's do a right zero. Also, I'm gonna change the background color so it sticks out a little bit more. Let me reload. Okay, yep, it is actually going to the right. It's, now it's going on top of our emoji. But then in this case, it's going under the emoji when there's an image. It's weird. Uh, let's do bottom zero. That should at least fix that scenario. Okay. Cool. And then we could just change the bottom zero to be enough that it'll allow the icon to fit underneath. So since it's width 12, I think if we do bottom 12, oh, maybe a little bit more. Bottom 14. 
Just keep keep incrementing until you get, in, get it to the right spot. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we could probably reduce the height a little bit. And let's do BG white. And then we could do a border. Border to border gray 500. Let's do like, what would we probably want to do flex or grid? Maybe like grid calls for, let's do get for. And then inside of here, we'd have all of the reaction options. Oh, look at this. Like that looks like, this looks so standard HTML with the square, this is crazy. Uh, let me change that border color. And I'll add a rounded large. Reload. Okay, this is what it kind of looks like now. I guess that's fine. And then once we put the different options in, in uh, it'll look a lot different. So now let's hook this up to the drop down controller by adding data dash target. Or no, data dash drop down target. And set that to menu. We can test if the toggling is working, which it is working. That's perfect. Although I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna add the hidden class for now while I'm coding the feature, just so that I can make sure that everything's in the right spot. So let's get started with the first reaction. Let's just try to do like a heart reaction. So for that, we could probably add an SVG. Heart. Let's do a solid heart. So I'm gonna copy this SVG, drop it in here, and let's go back and reload. Cool. So now we have an SVG there. Now I'm going to color it to red. I think for this you could do text red 500. And then look at that, we have a red heart. And then I'll do the same hover kind of effect on this one. Put it get slightly bigger. Look at that. We could also add a cursor pointer. Cursor pointer, so it looks like it's clickable. Although right now, of course, clicking it is not going to do much. But the next thing that we would have to add in is this functionality to make the clicks work. There's a couple ways that we could do this. Probably the most simplest is just using a link to. We could wrap this in a link to. Give it a path, which might just be like reactions path. And add a block. And we'll end off this link. So now we're wrapping it in that path, although that path doesn't exist yet. But that's the next thing that we're going to create. So we're going to need a controller to create reactions and then also possibly destroy the reactions if you like, if you wanted to undo that reaction or update it, I guess. But I think it should do the same thing. Uh, we'll just have one controller. So let's go first to config routes RB. Let's define this new reactions controller. So it might be nice to actually nest it inside of the posts so that we can pass the post ID through the URL. We can do something like this resources post do. And then I'll also use a namespace. We can say scope module posts do. And then inside of here, we can have a resources reactions. And then we'll only have a Create for now. Actually, that's all we need. So the controller that we need to generate for this is going to be in the app controllers. We need to create a post folder because we did the namespace. So we'll create the post folder and then I'll do a new file inside of it, which is going to be reactions controller rb. So we can do the class, which will be post, and then two colons, reactions controller. And it's going to inherit from application controller. And then the first thing we can do is uh, set up a before action to set the post. Whoops. And then let's add a private section and define this method. So here we're going to define the method. At post is going to equal to post.find and then the params post underscore ID. Now let's generate the create action or not generate, I guess <laughs> let's create, let's code the create action. And inside of here, 
what we do is we would try to create a reaction off of the post and we should have the model let's go to the models folder real quick and check we do have a reaction model we generated earlier in this video now we have to make sure that the other models know about their relationship to the reaction so if you go to the post rb it doesn't know about that it has many reactions so we have to add that has many reactions and we'll also go over to the user and add that has many reactions so that's good and then inside of the create we could either i think let's create it off the current user so current user dot reactions dot create and then we'll pass in the post to at post and the name is going to be probably coming from the params we just do it just like this we create the reaction so we could test this out already if i just go back to this link to reactions path i need to update this since we nested it inside of posts it's now going to look like this post underscore reactions path and then you'd have to pass in the post and we'll also pass in the name so for us it's going to be colon heart or we could do string heart let's probably do string heart just in case that has that makes it easier i don't know oh the last thing is let's set a uh a data turbo method because normally this would uh, a link to is going to make a get request but we want to make it do a post request to that reactions create control action so let's add a data turbo method and this is going to be set to post and i'll come back in here unrelated to the post model of course it's doing a post request which is the http request now let's click on the favorite and see what happens so nothing happened on the user side but in the back end we actually created a reaction it's pretty cool uh, so obviously if there is a reaction we would want to show the correct icon instead of showing this face so that is the thing that we would get into next if we go right here this is the reaction all we have to do is why don't we just put this into a partial render a reaction and then we'll pass in the post post and let's also pass in the user as the current user and the reason why is because later on we're going to start broadcasting this using websockets and we're not going to be able to access the current user like global variable there so we're going to need to pass it in as variable anyways so now let's create the new file underscore reaction.html.erb we can put back this icon although this is only going to show if there is no reaction so we have to do a query here we can check if current user dot reactions dot where post id is post id i think we might even just be able to say post is post so if there was then we would not show this otherwise we will show the default icon so if there was then i'm going to set this to a variable we can say reaction equals whoops reaction singular and then inside of here we could check like if reaction dot name i mean it's probably better off to render another partial let's just render like reaction slash post dot name or not post dot name what am i saying reaction dot name all right and then and this that's all we're going to need. Uh, so now I need a matching folder for this. Let's create a new reactions folder. And inside of it, we would have a partial for each name. So we used, what did we use on the post? I said it was heart. Okay, that's perfect. We didn't do uppercase. That's kind of important. So now I can go inside of reactions. I can create that partial underscore heart like HTML to your B. And now you can kind of see where I'm going with this flow. I feel like this is a pretty good setup like this. So we're rendering the partial for the correct name. Now, if the partial doesn't exist, we're going to want to 
think about that later, but there's no reason why it shouldn't exist if we know, like, we're the ones who define this. The only way it wouldn't exist if someone hacked, if they, like, right-clicked, inspect, and then changed the URL on that link. Of course, they could use whatever name, but, uh, yeah, that's their fault, I guess. Although we... <laughs> We could actually validate. We could have a list for valid reactions and just validate before we create. That's probably something that we would add in. So if I reload, oh, we're getting an error, missing partial. No way, underscore reaction. Why is that the name? Right, hold up, I'm gonna go into the Rails console real quick and check on that last reaction. Wait, the name is heart. Okay, something went wrong here. So I'm setting reaction if... Oh, it... I know what's happening. This is a funny glitch in Rails. So when you say dot where, it ret or not a glitch, it's just um, something that you might misunderstand it. I kind of forgot, or not forgot, but just didn't think of when I was writing this code. So if you do dot where, it's going to return an array, which would always pass the if truth each at test. So instead, we have to change this to find by, and then let's change post ID to post ID. This should work much better. To reload. Cool, cool. Although, wait, look, this is supposed to be showing that heart, but it's not. Should be slash reaction reaction slash heart is that not what's happening oh i didn't have anything here that's silly so let's go back here let's grab this icon from down there then we'll go over to heart drop in the icon and i just want to make it larger uh you know what? i'm going to make it match the styling for the default right here so the width 12 and the scale thing Although, let's leave the text red. But there we go. Reload. And boom, we have the heart icon. That's really sweet. So now let's hide this drop down by default. So let's go back to underscore post. We'll add a hidden class to this drop down right here. Boom, now it's hidden. So if you went to one of these posts and you clicked, now it pops up in the reaction. You can click and it creates the reaction, but it doesn't do it in real time. So you have to reload to see your reaction happen. Just something that is easily fixable. Uh, easily, easily fixable. So all we have to do is uh, go back maybe on this reaction. Let's add an ID. And let's put this around the icon. And we'll call this, well, let's use DOM ID actually. So DOM ID, pass in the post, and then we'll say the reaction. Cool. And then what will happen is on this reactions controller, we're gonna respond to with a I forget if you have to still do this anymore. I haven't put this in my code in a long time. Format that turbo stream. We're just gonna say we're only gonna return with a blank turbo stream. Although I don't think this is even necessary. And then we'll go over to the views and go to reactions. And I'm gonna create the matching turbo stream for this action. So let's do a new file. Do create dot turbo stream dot erb. And then inside of the turbo stream, we can do a turbo stream dot update. Or actually not update, we want to do a replace because we want to replace the whole element. And what we'll do is we'll render. Basically, all the the only thing that we're gonna render is this again, this render reaction. So let's go back to the turbo stream. And the way that turbo streams work, we can access the current user. That's kind of cool. Yeah, because it's not actually broadcasting over WebSockets. It's just 
returning a thing and it's having it update the page. Although that didn't even work. It said no template found for posts reactions controller create. Oh, I see. Because we had that namespace, uh, the create actually, it's looking for a reactions folder inside of the post folder. I need to create a reactions folder and I'll just move my turbo stream over into that one. And we could still leave this for the, I guess this is just like the reactions, different partials. But now we have two reactions folder. Oh, let's reload. Oh, what happened? Undefined local variable post, right? So I have the wrong scope. I need to use instance variables for the app post. That should be better. Come on, no, we're so close. Now it's saying missing partial post reaction slash reaction. Oh, I need to use the hard coded path. So feed slash reaction, isn't that where you put it? Press heart, it actually works. Cool, this is really cool. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign out, get a fresh account so I can react. Although I'm not actually using react, but react on rails. Sign up, cool. And now I'm gonna test out this new feature. So this is a great post from Indigo. This is looking pretty interesting. If I click here, we get all the reaction types. I can click heart, boom, just like that. It hearts the thing. Although one thing, I, <laughs> I feel like after it's done hearting, we should probably close the drop down, right? Mm, that's a tricky one. I mean, it's not really tricky per se, but it's something to think about. Huh. So maybe instead of just swapping out the icon, we could actually replace all of this content. Although it just seems kind of wasteful because unless we're going to change, unless we're, we'd actually be like changing this for some reason and we wanted to update it. Hmm. We could also just say when you click on the link, it has to close the drop down. All we have to do to make this drop down close is add another action on this link too. We can have an action which will go to drop down and we just say close. Close method, which is going to be separate from toggle, because all it's going to do is just close it. And it's also not going to prevent this link from submitting. And I'll show you how we'll do that. So let's go to JavaScript controllers, drop down controller. Or I'll show you what I mean. So for toggle, we're passing in the event and then we're preventing default, which means if you were trying to submit a link request and toggle at the same time, it would prevent your link request from sending. But here we're going to have a close, which we're not even going to pass in an event. We're not going to care about that. All we're going to do is grab this piece of code right here. Let's pull it over. So it's saying like if the menu target's not closed already, it's gonna close it by adding the hidden class. And we can actually clean up this code here by adding this method too. So that was a nice little improvement. And now you'll notice if we go to do a reaction, we click, very nice experience. And we didn't have to do much, too much to implement this. Oh, another thing is when you click away, we wanna have this close just like how the one in the nav bar closes. So all we have to do is use the close on less dropdown method. Uh, let's set that up, I guess right up here. Data action equals click at window. Oh, the only thing is <laughs> if you click on any of these, because we're checking inside of the scope of the dropdown, uh, it wouldn't close if you clicked on any of these. So actually I might change this scope. And you know what, I'll add another div. That'll wrap these bottom elements. Hopefully their absolute positioning will still work the same way. Let's reload. Yep, looks like everything works the same. Uh, hello. 
I don't think we've finished the code yet. Click window is supposed to go to drop down and close unless drop down method. Cool. So we click. We can click here, it doesn't close, but we click here and it closes. Okay, this is just, that's pretty cool. It's pretty, pretty cool. Oh, another thing I don't really like is this drop down is like sitting right on the edge. It's not really too big of a concern, but I would like it if it could overflow, which might be a problem because we have the overflow hidden right here. Ooh. I want to remove that overflow hidden just for things like this. And then it looks like it still works the same. The only difference when I remove overflow hidden is the image has a square corner, which is kind of annoying. But what we could do to fix that is just add to the image tag overflow hidden. Pretty easy solution right there. Although we also have to add rounded large. Or maybe we don't even maybe we don't need overflow hidden, we just needed rounded large. Reload. Yeah, that's what it was. So we don't even need the overflow hidden. Perfect. Now for this drop down, I'm gonna position it a little bit off so that it looks more cool, like more like it's popping out in your face. So let's go here to absolute. Instead of right zero, let's do negative right eight. Let's see what that looks like. Boom. Check it out. It's like a little bit of offset. Oh, another cool feature is that when you click on another one, it closes the previous one because of how our stimulus is set up. We didn't even have to code that. So this is pretty cool. Now we'll probably add a couple more reactions. Let's go back to hero icons. Let's see if they have a thumbs up. Oh, they do have a thumbs up. Although oh, it's not really colored, but that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll drop in our thumbs up. I'll copy this link because we're going to have another one. And then I'm going to do thumbs up. And I'll copy the styling. I guess we just left it with the default styling. Except for we don't want text red. Let's do like text yellow, maybe like emoji color. Let's see what it looks like. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. Maybe, maybe it should be brighter. Actually, I want to fill the inside that's why let's do thumbs up i need to get the solid one let's copy this svg here we go and i'm going to take this styling apply it on the new icon reload all right we have a filled one i mean that yellow color is kind of weird maybe i'll Change it to text yellow 300, a little bit brighter. Or maybe the thumbs up should be green. Let's try green. But of course we don't have to use these icons. We could go to like flat icon and find a more cool colored in thumb. If you wanted to. Look at all these options. You could have this one as the reaction, or like this one has the sparkles and everything. Of course, we could add that. Um, it's really just the same thing. Like, you guys see how I'm doing it. You could just have an image. You could have a physical emoji, too. Although, I think these are the Android emojis. But we could use those. This is already interesting. So what happens if I click a green, but there's already a red? What happens? Reload. It still sticks with the red, but I'm pretty sure it created the reaction because we don't have any limits, which is not really a good thing. Uh, so we want to actually switch that. Uh, we can do a check inside of the reactions controller. So we're going to create. Hmm. Okay. 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 So we'd almost want to find like we could set reaction equals current user dot reactions dot find or create by 
This is just the first draft of code, by the way. So we could create the reaction and then we could update it with the name. Hmm. That's not a bad idea right there. Try to do green, although, oh, missing partial thumbs up. So it looked like it did work. Uh, let's go create that quick partial. So in the views reactions, we'll create our underscore thumbs up dot html the rb partial and then let's go back to the posts i'm going to grab the svg drop it in here and i think the only difference is just to do what like a width 12 now we can get rid of these things here oh that's so cool so you can do heart thumbs up this is already such a good vibe honestly wow so the next thing might be like laughing and I don't think they have laughing on hero icons. Yeah, they do not. So we're going to have to find our own icon for laughing. Uh, let's do this one. As far as size, I'm going to try to not get it too big. So let's maybe do 64 pixels. The thing about flat icon is it gives you a PNG too. So it's not even an SVG, but it, it's essentially the same thing for us. So now let's drop our image in. Wait, where's our image? I have to get it from my file explorer. So we're gonna grab our laughing image, put it inside of the app assets images folder. It's the same place where we have all of our other, uh, our other images. And now let's go back to the post partial. I'm gonna copy this other one. And I'll change this to say like laughing. And instead of an SVG, we're going to just do an image tag or laughing.png. And for the size, I think we can just do like with eight object cover. So let's see how that looks. Let's reload. Oh, it looks pretty good. But it doesn't have the it doesn't have the scale thing. So we could add that. Also, we don't need cursor pointer anymore because it's already in a link. So it's going to do that by default. Uh, but let's add this hover scale effect. So it like slightly grows when you hover. Oh, another thing I just noticed on the navbar, we need to add padding for sure for these links. Let me go to layout slash underscore navbar. <laughs> let's do px4. Let's reload. Cool. All right, this is looking pretty good. And I'm very happy with with these reactions. Just developing this like this time has just been so easy. Like, wow, I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Oh, we're missing the partial. So now we can still have the same flow. Let's go to the reactions, create our underscore laughing.html erb partial. And then inside of here, instead of an SVG, of course, it's image tag. I'm just going to go to laughing.png. And then the class is width 12, object cover. And do we need the scale thing? Yeah. We usually do the scale thing. So, what I really like about this feature is that we're able to, at the same time, use SVGs, images, and then you could easily swap these out when you're ready to, like, let's say, put in your own icons that your team has developed this is so cool we just added reactions into our social media although right now we now the thing is this is only for one user <laughs> so yeah like i reacted with a heart but nobody else would know if i opened up like a new tab so that's where we're going to get into the social aspect of reactions and if you guys notice on linkedin and like facebook how they usually do it is they just show how many people have done like certain reactions and they put a count. So we could do something like that too. But I'm already happy with this MVP. This is looking really cool how we could just easily switch between reactions almost instantaneously. Let's check out what it looks like on mobile. So on mobile, because we're doing that right thing, it kind of goes off the screen. So we can fix that by going back to 
the feed underscore post and then for this right let's only do that on what like large screens otherwise we'll just say right zero or even a little bit of some padding away from the right yeah that looks pretty good on mobile and then when you go to larger screen it fixes and it goes back to the offset that's really exciting already all right i'm really excited to finish this off with that final feature which will make this more of a social experience so real quickly let's create a new post hello youtube hello this is going to be an amazing video i'm going to put an image let's see I know most of these are just anime pictures. I should probably get some other pictures, but this is what it looks like when you don't have any reactions. So what I would like to have happen is show the count of reactions for a certain post and make that a public thing. So to test this out, I guess let me open up an incognito window so I can have a separate account. Let's go in here. I'm going to create a new account. So let me call this YouTube Fun. Wait, that's the email. Uh, YouTube fun at gmail.com. 555. Five, five, five. Wait, that's my password. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Oh, that's not my real password. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you haven't reacted to a post. But obviously, these ones already have reactions. So I would like to show at least like a little count of what other people have been reacting to the post. Kind of like how LinkedIn or Facebook might show it. So let's go ahead and implement that. If we go back to uh, the views in the feed folder and the post partial, that's where we have this whole setup for the reaction. We have it wrapped in this nice container. So what might be cool is, hmm, I guess we probably use this absolute element that we already have for the icon right here. And then we could just go right next to it and show like a smaller kind of thing for the reactions that it has. So we put that right here, right next to the link or right before the link actually. <clears throat> so what we want to find is probably like the top three reactions. Now, right now we only have three reactions, so that makes it really easy. But eventually when we have like 50 different reactions, we probably want to only pull up, pull up like the top certain amount of reactions that'll fit for our UI. So to do that, why don't we start by just saying post.reactions. So we're gonna get all the reactions for a certain post. And then we can say, uh, well, hmm. it's interesting. Cause we wanna like, we all, we wanna group the reactions by the name and count them. So this, this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Like we need some SQL for this, but we could start off just by doing it kind of like in a hard coded way. So we can just check post.reactions.where uh, name is heart. That's like the heart reactions. Or why don't we even, we can make that a method. Heart reactions on the post model. So we can go over to the models and then the post.rb. We'll add another method, which is going to be part reactions. Although I think we might be able to scope a method with has many. I'm not sure if we can though. But heart reactions this is another way that it's basically the same thing. So it's going to be searching the reactions for where the name is heart. And one thing you're going to want to know about this already is when you're doing queries inside of a loop, it's going to get very expensive. As you can see in our console, basically the only thing you're seeing is just queries, querying different things. So to speed up our page load, eventually we're going to need to think about optimizing these queries either by adding in includes, things like that. So what we can say though, anyways, let's grab the heart reactions. We'll say... If there's any heart reactions, then we can just, why don't we do a div flex 
gap to item center. We're going to have a div right here where we'll put the image. We're going to render, or actually, hmm. So if we render this one, it's going to use the full size, but I want it to be a little bit smaller. <laughs> this is tricky. Maybe I shouldn't have hard coded the styling right here, but it's probably fine. So what happens? I mean, I don't know if I can just try to make it smaller. Oh yeah, I totally could with padding. I don't know if, actually, I don't know if that'll work the same way. All right, another option is just to literally grab that SVG, put it right here, even though it's less dry. And by dry, I mean the principle of do not repeat yourself. Right here, I am kind of repeating myself instead of putting it in one place. There's a few ways that we could like refactor this, I guess, but for right now, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Let's do the width eight. Actually, it's basically gonna be the same as the one down here the really tiny one from inside of the drop down so if we go back and reload now you see there's actually like that heart icon but we don't need the hover state on it Ooh, or maybe we do maybe we want it uh we probably do want it so that when you click on one of like the ones that are showing it will do that favorite for you i don't know that probably is a flow for right now let's remove the hover i guess and right here we also need the count Let's do like a span. Text XL. We might not even want to have it that large, but do this for now. Put out the count. Reload. Oh, that's interesting. Did I? Oh, I didn't say dot count. Just put out the whole. That's the whole group of records. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, although I want to align this differently so that it's on the left uh, so to do that let's add a flex class inside of here flex item center yeah four so it's basically the same thing but we're going to position the other people's reactions there we go you guys can kind of see the setup for this maybe i'll remove the padding or the gap from inside though just like that Sure, that's probably fine. And we can make it smaller. I don't think it needs to be text XL. Just be regular. Regular text for now. Let's see, whoops. Let me close this. This is kind of tricky to have two windows open. So that's what it looks like right now. It's actually pretty chill. So there's like one favorite, two favorites. All right, and then we could get the rest of the icons. So I'm gonna just copy this. Basically, oh, but we're gonna need the new method. We're gonna need, ooh. Yeah, actually this probably isn't the best way of doing this. Because the problem is when you, each time you call it, it makes another query too, so it's even worse. It's probably better to just do this right there, now that I'm thinking about it. And then we could refactor this. So what, what I would say is if, basically if, and then just define it here, heart reactions equal reactions where and heart reactions dot any. Kind of an overkill way of doing it. I'm ho <laughs> I'm hoping that this will because you're setting it equal to maybe it's gonna think this. So I almost wanna like do this. Uh, that's that's some pretty crazy code though. I would not submit that. Oh, and now we're gonna say post dot reactions for the query. Yeah, I wouldn't use this in like a real app, honestly. Wait, undefined method heart reactions. Oh yeah, down here. So this works or no? Let me take out this code for a second. <laughs> I just need to see if that refactoring worked. No, wait. Oh, yeah, it did. The difference is we're only doing the query once because we're setting it here, and then we're just displaying the count. So that's kind of cleaner code. 
we don't need the method in the model because then we could just switch it out if we want to find let's say the thumbs up I'll just switch this thumbs up reactions and then I just need that thumbs up icon right here and put it right here and boom that's all it takes I guess I'll remove the scale, although I'm probably going to add that right back in a second. Check it out. I like that. You know, I think it's fine if we just leave it like this, and then if you want to do your own reaction, you have to click the smiley face button. And now we might as well do the last one. Oh, wait, what did... <laughs> I did not mean to open up Git. So now I'm going to handle the last one, which is laughing. So let's copy this. Do laughing reactions and then laughing. The final thing is the SVG it needs to be the laughing one. There's actually just an image tag. There we go. That's all it takes. So now we have a working social media app. With reactions this is very enjoyable already let's go ahead and test out a new post Ooh, I just noticed we needed padding on this post page too I always have to do those little UI improvements whenever I can that's how it is when you're building your own apps really so let's go to post new add px4 come out reload there we go, now it looks a little bit better for mobile. So I'm going to type a cool post. Hey, people, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Social media app, it's pretty cool. Let me know what features you want me to build in the next video. Cool. And for image, Let's see, I probably have an image of me. Here we go, Indigo Tech Tutorials. That's pretty sweet. Let's reload. This is the latest post on our social media. It's my face. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Go ahead and leave a thumbs up, just like that. And if you want to do any more reactions, just leave them in the comments. Check it out. And then we have the count right here. That's beautiful. So much fun. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think this is a pretty fun video. And yeah, have fun with the social media. If you want to download the code, it's going to be in the description. 100% free. You can use it. Take it and build your own app. Thank you guys so much for watching the video.